and today we're going to work on a form of art called fluid art. Some of you know it as paint pouring. Okay, there's so many different processes that you can use for paint pouring. Today I'm going to show you three different processes on 10 by 10 canvases. Now what I generally do before I start painting is I will put tape on the back of my canvas because the paint is going to be flowing over the side of the canvas and I don't like when the bottom of my canvas gets stuck. So that's what I do for everything that I paint pour on. You can use cups to rest your canvas on or I sometimes use push pins that you use in a bulletin board and I will push that at the bottom in the bottom of the canvas and it has to keep it up off the table otherwise your paint as it dries is going to sit stick to the surface you put it on so let's start with the first one is going to be a process called dutch pour and that's where i put white well i use a background color of white you can use any color you want white or black or any of the colors but i put down white I coat the whole canvas with it and then I put my color on it and then I blow it out with a hair dryer and you have some beautiful effects with that. Okay now the first painting we're going to do is called a Dutch pour as I mentioned before and I'm going to coat the canvas with white and then pour circles of paint on top of each other and then I'm going to take the hair dryer and blow the paint over the canvas and it makes beautiful designs. Now the colors I'm going to be using are blue, red, and yellow. And as most of you know, those are your primary colors and they are your basic colors that all others colors come from. And so as we mix these, you'll see other colors surfacing. You'll see purples come out as you mix the red and the blue. If you mix the red and the yellow you will get orange if you mix the blue with the yellow you'll get green if you mix the purple i mean the blue and the red you will get purple so you will have an assortment of colors on here by only using three so let's begin oh and the ratio that i use because you don't just pour regular paint on the canvas what you need to do is you need to mix either water or some other items in with the paint to make the paint flow smoothly. In this case, to keep it simple, and also you have to decide if this is a form of art that you want to continue with, we are going to just start with water. So it's inexpensive, you just buy your paints, whatever paint you choose, and we'll go over that at the end of the video. You just mix it with, in this case, three parts paint, and one part water. So I have mixed it to the consistency and you can see that it, there we go. You can see that it falls right into the cup. There's no puddle or anything on the surface of the paint. So you wanna keep it that thin. Okay, so we're going to start with the white paint, which as I said, you can see is thin. And we're going to pour it over the canvas. And then I'm going to twirl it to spread the paint evenly over the canvas. And this is going to help when you pour your colored paints on top of it. This will help spread your paint. Sometimes you have to give it a little nudge. Like so. It looks like I have a little something in my paint. There we go. You want to get your paint as smooth as you can. Okay. Always have paper towels around. 
because this is going to be a very messy project. All right, now I'm going to start putting paint on the canvas in small circles. Let's start, uh, yes, let's start with the blue. And on top of that, I think I'll put yellow. And that should help to form some green as the paint is being blown out. Then we can go to the red. And we know what red and yellow makes, it makes orange. Okay. Then we'll go back to the blue. And blue and red make purple. Go back to the yellow. We'll end with the red. I'm going to put a drop of black in there because that helps with the contrast. And you'll see this black is just as thin as the other paint I mixed. Just a little bit. You don't need much because black does have a tendency to take over. And you don't want it to do that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flood the canvas again. That's what we call it. And I'm going to go around the circle because I'm going to blow that white paint over the colored paint. And then we'll blow it out. Okay. Now this is just my standard hair dryer. As you can see, it's used often. It's full of paint. I put it on a high setting. What I'm going to do, because you may not be able to hear me with the hair dryer on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that paint, white paint that I just made a circle of, and I'm going to blow it over the color. I think I'll put it in a lower setting. Okay, now we're going to blow it out. Let's move it a little. Oops. Let's move this back. There we go. Now you'll notice that there's little dots popping up, and we call those cells. And what that is, is the paint that's underneath is popping up through the top colors. Now, in order to make some of the cells come up even more, it helps if you apply heat to it. Now, I happen to have a torch. Not everybody has that, but you can also use one of these, which most homes have. Okay. This is not something that children normally would play with. See the flame coming out? And I'm just going to go over this lightly. And what that does, in addition to helping the cells, is if there are any air bubbles here, it will eliminate the air bubbles because what you don't want is your paint, your picture to dry with air bubbles in it because what happens is you'll have what looks like little pinpricks on top of your painting. So you want to eliminate as many air bubbles as you can. Now the other thing you need to be aware of is what you see here may look entirely different when it's dry. Fluid art has two different forms, when it's wet and when it's dry. So you might actually see more colors come to the surface or dry differently, or you may see additional cells as the paint dries. But that's just an example of what a Dutch pour looks like. And if you remember, I was saying when you mix your primary colors, you can see there's green in there. I see a little bit of pink, which mixed with the white. There's purple in here with the red and the blue mixing together. 
and there's that little bit of black and if I had put much more in there that has a tendency to take over black is a very strong color but what's fun are all these little cells that pop up I wish a little more had shown up over here but every painting that you do is going to be different very very different you don't know what to expect What I wanted to show you after I did the Dutch pour was some of the examples I have of the Dutch pours I've done. So you can see they can look entirely different. For example, this one, which we've named the Green Giant. No, I think it was the Green Dragon. Yes, we named it the Green Dragon. This I did by putting stripes of color down the center of the canvas. Various colors, different shades of green, with white going through it and a little bit of yellow. And I just just did what you just saw me do on the, on the small painting. I just blew it out in different directions. And you'll see many cells in this particular one because I use a different formula, which I said I was going to go over at the end of the picture. This is more than just paint and water. And we'll discuss that toward the end. But that's just another example, and you could do this on any size canvas. I've done large scans, 36 by 20, whatever, and they come out beautiful. The other one, for example, is this one. Now, I didn't put the paint on this particular canvas in any particular design. I just put paint on it, and I blew it out, like you just saw me do on the small canvas. But what I then did when the paint was still wet is I took a balloon and I put it on top of the wet paint and I went like that. Cleaned off the balloon and did it wherever you want to do it. I call them angel kisses. You can call them whatever you want. Some people call them balloon kisses. So you just get your balloon and tap it. I've seen some artists They'll take the balloon and they'll roll it off the side of the canvas and that makes another design. So uh, this one I call Angel Whispers. To me it just reminds me of something ethereal, very angel-like. So that's another way. You see I completely covered the canvas. There was no particular pattern. I just laid paint all over it and just blew with the dryer. Okay, now we're going to do another form of painting called a swipe and drag with some smears. That's always fun. So I'm taking the same paint that I did before, the same colors. I wanted to use all the same colors in all three paintings so you can see the different looks that even using the same color, you, you can have a different look. So I coat the canvas again with white. In my case, I used white. You can use any color you want. and stock up on your tongue depressors or your popsicle sticks. You're going to be using a lot of them. You can buy them online in big boxes of 500 or 1,000. And you may already have them at home with other craft projects you're doing. See, there were some air bubbles in there and I just popped them, but that's the idea of using the torch. It gets rid of the air bubbles. Okay, now what we're going to do is take the same colors and I'm going to make a stripe across the center of the painting. want to make the color uniform. I am going to use a little bit of black again for contrast, but not much.
Now what we're going to do is I'm going to wet a paper towel at one corner or one end of the paper towel and I'm going to introduce you to silicone. Silicone helps make all those little cells that I was telling you about before. I'm not going to put it on the paint, but I'm going to put it on the edge of my paper towel. Now what I'm going to do is lay it on top and pull it. Makes the coolest designs. And because I put silicone in it, it should develop some cells. As you can see, the cells are developing. Now I'm going to turn it around and wet another paper towel. Put some more silicone on it. Not much. You don't need much. I'm going to swipe the other side. You can swipe it straight, you can make squiggles in it, you can do anything you want. You have to have fun with this. Look at the cells that are popping up. I'm going to torch it. Get rid of the air bubbles. This also helps with the cell formation. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going, this is called the swipe technique, I'm also now going to do some schmears and you'll see how pretty that looks. With the same colors, you can even add more colors if you want at this point. I purposely am not using metallics today because that's not something people generally have in their stash of paints, but metallics do beautifully and I'm going to give you an example of that. Got a little thin there. I'm going to drop it black again. Oops. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I have a palette knife. I'm going to make some swirls in this, like this, in the center. Then I'm going to do some smears. And what I mean by that is you take the paint and you do that. Look how fun that is. It's bringing up all the colors and mixing them together. This is a fun one to do, and on a big canvas, it looks beautiful. I'll give you an example of that. You could continue and make swirls down here. I've done that in a couple of paintings. So you have the cells from the swipe, and now you're doing something different with the smears. It just layer as another layer of contrast to the picture, that's all. But it, they're fun. Let me put some swirls up here. I don't like that one too much. There. Okay. So, let me blow it again. In case any air bubbles got in there. Okay. Okay. The painting we just did, the swipe and smear, I want to give you an example of some other ways that you can do it too. This was one of them that I did, it's done with a lot of acrylics, um, not acrylics, metallics. And uh, I have a friend who actually says it reminds her of sharks. But uh, I did the, the swipe just like you did. I did mine on an angle from this, from corner to corner, as opposed from side to side. 
and I did the swipe and I did the smears came out that way very simple beautiful the other one that I did that is similar actually to this one is I have a friend who told me these look like little flowers like little roses but this the process was the same I put the paint down in a line I swiped it put more paint down in the center and did the smears with the palette knife you can use a popsicle stick anything you want and uh, actually I continued the circle and it does look like little flowers as you can see over here I just made a couple of little flips over here I, I kept going in circles this one was fun to do this one has a lot of cells in it and you can see that I didn't do it quite halfway I did it about two-thirds of the way up Various shades of green. I use lots of green here, different greens and a little bit of yellow and white, as you can see. And of course, you can see I use blue for the for the sky, different shades of blue. And I did the same thing as you saw me do here. Put the paint down, took paper towels and swiped it down. Now look at all those cells. Okay. And I didn't get very many cells up here. I got some, but not very many. It was a different process that I used. I didn't put any silicone up here. Now here, I just made some circles of paint. I just kept going round and round and round. Just, and, and you take your popsicle stick if you want and smear it around, anything you want over here. Actually, a friend of mine told me this looked like a lemon. Uh, of course, it has segmented pieces in it, but we call it um, garden fruits. This one. Now, the big one here is another example of a swipe and smear with definite cell action going on. This is very heavily metallic, as you can see. Okay, so same process. I went across, just like I did with this painting, pulled it down, put more paint in the middle, and did my smears. So you can have, you do it in any color, any size, canvas, do anything you want. Just have fun with it. And if you don't like what you did, all you have to do is take it over the garbage pail, take a popsicle stick, scrape the paint off and start again. That's all. Okay, I think we're gonna show you another one. Okay, now the third process we're going to work on, and there are many processes, but this the, I'm just showing you only three of this whole form of art, um, is a circle pour. Some people call it a tree pour. So first of all, I'm going to, again, flood my canvas. The spatula is wonderful. I got this on Amazon. A lot of the artists on YouTube use this and I can see why. It spreads the paint nicely in one big swipe. we're good now what we're going to do is a little something different than the other two is I'm going to layer the paint inside of another cup and uh, again we're using the same color so you'll get basically the same colors but a, a completely different look so I'm going to load it with blue first yellow is going to help make it green Red will help make that orange. A little bit of black for contrast, not much. Remember what we said about black. I'm gonna put another layer in of the blue, yellow, red, and we'll top it off with the black. Okay, I think I'm going to put a little puddle. Let me put a little puddle of the black in the center. Okay, you can see how this paint is layered in the cup. Okay, now we're just going to do circles.
this out of the way. Now, what we can do, I'm going to show you something that's really fun to do. I have a comb here. What we're going to do is swipe through this mound of paint. Look at the designs that it makes. Now we're going to twirl it. You don't want it to go off of the canvas just yet. You don't want to lose all of your paint. So get the design that you want. Always bring your picture or the paint back to the center and then go to the next corner. Back to the center, down to the next corner, center. Look at that great design on there. This is one of my favorites. And you should see how beautiful it is when you use so many different colors. Look at that. And it looks just as pretty on the side of the painting as it does on the top. There you go. That's a circle pour with a comb running through it. Okay, I want to give you a sample of some of the green pours that I have done. So you can see what it looks like if you just use a solid color or maybe one or two colors. This has lavender in it, as you can see, purple, white, and um, I think those are the only colors I used in this. But as you can see, oh, and black, when you blend them, other colors pop up. Colors you wouldn't think of, but they do, they pop up. Now this one, I do not believe I used a comb Oh, certain sections you can see there was a comb that I ran through, not the whole thing. So, and this may have also been a picture that had several circles on it. Okay, and then I just rolled them to get them together. Here's another one with basically, a, I call this butterscotch, with just yellow and browns and whites through it. Very simple no comb going through it just a simple circle pour and you can see there was a circle pour down here there was one up here so this had four pours in it four circles same thing with this this had several circles in it you can still see one is very definite down there and there was a comb on this side so just just play Find things that you have around the house that you can run through your paint. You can use anything. The whole idea is to have fun with it and to see if this is something that you do want to do. Because if you do, I'll show you some products you're going to want to use. Now this one, I didn't realize this until my husband pointed it out to me. Um, as you can see, this is a, a circle board with a lot of comb running through it. And I didn't realize it, but if you look close, you can see a wolf. There's the ear, the face, this, the nose, and I think the teeth are in there somewhere. Here, here's the teeth. But it, if you look at it, it does look like an abstract wolf. Okay, and uh, I use the large um, artist canvas because I put my paintings in shows and try to sell them. Um, so, um, and by doing that, people don't have to frame them because they're thick. They're, they're, they are their own frame. And you can see it's painted on the side. It looks, it looks so pretty with the paint falling off of it. This is one of the first paintings actually I did, and it was kind of fun to do. Find some napkin rings that maybe you have around the house you're not using anymore. And I place them in various places. I think there was actually five of them in this case. And I place them in various places on the canvas and I fill them with paint. And I layer them. So there are different colors in each one. And then when you get off however many you're going to use on there, you pick them up. Pick it up. Pick that one up. That one up. Pick them all up. Now you've got mounds of paint in the middle of all different colors and you swirl it around. 
And in each one of these, when I put the paint in, I put a little bit of the silicone that I was using. And that's what helps make the cells. Now, being we're talking about the silicone, let me show you the silicone that I use. I've tried others and I wasn't as happy as I am with this one. This is treadmill. Oops, sorry. This is treadmill belt lubricant. A lot of the artists use this, and I learned this from YouTube, from these artists. This is great. Um, you don't use very much of it. You only need a drop or two in each one of your colors, but that's what make, helps make the cells. Now, you're always going to have leftover paint, and I wanna show you a couple of things you can do with your leftover paint that make beautiful gifts. Everybody's heard of the dollar store. Go to the dollar store, pick up a vase, okay? and turn that clear vase into something like this and as you can see that's all paint pouring just like what's on the canvases but you can you can do paint pouring anything so i'm going to show you that process real quick here's how you put the paint on a vase what i like to do is first of all i layered the paint just like i did when we did the ring pour i like to do a little bit at the bottom first so i know for sure i'm going to get the whole vase covered Make sure now to just start from the top and you can just keep doing your circle pour like you did. I'm going to want more yellow in there so I can do the same thing pull more paint and I think we have enough blue let's see if we can get some orange in there You never know what you're going to get. And again, like I said, if you don't like what you've done, do it over. Just pour paint over, but that's interesting. Look at the side of that. Now this definitely will look very different tomorrow once it's dry than it does now because being this is on a vertical item, this paint really is going to drop. So we might end up with just a red and yellow striped vase. It'll be colorful. It'll be a little different than this one, which I originally showed you. I had some metallics in this. Now, once um, you're done with this, I let this dry for several days, okay? And then you can spray, and I'll show you the acrylic paint, uh, uh, acrylic uh, varnish that you're going to use for this. While that's drying, I want to show you something else. I picked up another one at the dollar store and look at how pretty that is. This was all done with all metallics, just metallics. And this is the reason why I wanted to do halfway because even this worked out okay because there's black within this. And so that's fine. looks like it's part of the design. I would have preferred the paint to go all the way to the bottom. So when I do these now going forward, what I do is I see, I put a layer of paint halfway through and I let that fall and then I start again from the top. And this way you're guaranteed that your paint will coat the whole bottom of the vase. And you know, it's, all, it's glass inside obviously, so you just fill that with, with water and use it with your flowers. Well, it looks like we're going to have a red and yellow. Let's put a little bit of blue on that. Let's put a little bit. <laughs> it'll just be a fun vase that's all and if you don't want to use it for flowers you can just put it on your dresser in your bedroom if it matches 
just wanted to give you an example of what to use or how you can use your leftover paint. Another way you can use, use your leftover paint is on rocks. Now rocks, I absolutely love doing as well. Let me show you. you. Just get your regular rocks. I get my rocks, I buy, a, buy them by the bucket. And I live in Monroe, so there's a place in Monroe called Visions, I believe. And it's a landscaping business. And you can go there and you can buy for $15, you can buy a bucket of rocks. And it, I mean, right to the top. So I have many, many of these type rocks. I paint, I wash them really well. And then I painted this one, for example, in black. And what we can do, I don't have much paint left, but I think enough to do. one rock. Again, we're using the same colors to use up all this paint, but you'll see I'm going to show you some of the rocks that I've done. You can use any color. Metallics look beautiful on rocks. A little bit of black. I'm going to put a little bit of white. Did I use it? Oh, here it is. I'm going to put a little bit of white in this. Now what I do, make sure that the bottom is covered, same basically as with the vase. I will put a little bit of paint along the bottom like this. Turn it over. Now, you can do any design that you want on your rocks. Look at that. Make your swirls. I think we need a little bit more over here. Okay. Let me give you examples of what some of the rocks could look like um, when you have uh, leftover paint. Actually, I make my rocks because I plan on putting them in shops and, um, and sell them. Uh, so I actually mix up paint for my paints. But for you, I mentioned using uh, your leftover paint. But here's an example. They have not been sprayed yet. You can see the design on it and I'll paint different dots on them, different colors. You see this one has black. Now these are not done yet, as you can see. So what I'll do is I will coat these rocks, take it outside. You need to have a very well ventilated area for this, but I'll use this. And I'll spray my rock on the bottom and let it dry. And with this stuff, it dries almost immediately. You can go back out in 30 minutes, okay. And then you just turn it over and spray the top of it. Okay. And then just let that dry for several days. And then what I do is I will take my rock, which is now coated, and in the bottom here, I will cover that white part with glue. And I'll cut out a piece of felt and lay the felt on it. And when you lay the felt, you lay it down and let that dry. That's going to take several hours to dry. When it has dried, you pick it up and you just trim off the excess felt around the outside because you're not going to get the felt when you cut it out to be exactly this shape. You're just going to cut out with a big square or something and put it there. 
So it's only going to stick where you put the glue anyhow. So then you just trim it all around and then you'll have rocks that look like this that people can put on their end tables. The, they're used as paperweights. Um, I have a whole dish full of them here that I leave on a shelf in my living room and they are awesome conversation starters. And actually what I have used them for is when my family or friends and I have picnics outside and we have a tablecloth on the table and the wind blows up the ends, I will put this on the ends of all the tables. And again, it's a great conversation piece, but it really holds your table down, your tablecloth down. So this is just some examples of what you can do with your leftover paint. Or just mix up paint. If you know that's what you want to do, wash up a bunch of rocks and mix up your paint. Well, I just wanted to thank you all for coming to watching this video. And uh, if you have any questions, I believe my email address is going to be listed at the bottom of the video. Um, this has been such a fun journey for me. You will have so much fun doing this, but you have got to make sure that everything is covered where you're going to paint because you're going to find paint everywhere. This is almost worse than finger painting. Um, so I hope that I've helped you decide if this is something that you do want to do. Um, I didn't think I was going to do it, but once you start making some pictures and you get the reaction from people that they love them, you're going to start making them for gifts. And you might even get to the point where you will put them in certain shops or studios for sale. I've started putting mine and mine have been in shows. So um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, good luck.